the question this morning is, is your soul in bondage to a habit? Is your soul in bondage to a habit? And, and last week there was just an, an outpouring of people who, just, who, who was in bondage and God just said, do it again. So this morning we're just focusing on, a, on, on bad habits that we can have. Bad habits that we can have. You know, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks for your goodness, your grace. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that you are the bondage breaker. We thank you that through the cross, Lord, there's nothing in our lives, absolutely nothing, oh God, that cannot be overcome. We thank you because you are the victory for us. You are the victory, Lord, in our lives. And we pray for those that are watching. And Lord, there, there's a habit that's no, that does no hold them at this. It has held them in slavery. Oh God, we pray that tonight will be freedom night for them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I, I, I read a story about Jumbo. <laughs> Jumbo was the biggest elephant in captivity. So powerful was he that he, he could uproot a full-grown tree. <laughs> Yet when Jumbo traveled with the P.T. Barnum Circus, he, he was secured with nothing more than a 12-inch stake and a small little rope. Did you ever stop to think, hey, you know, wait a minute. Physi phys physically speaking, there is no way that a 12-inch stake and a little small rope could hold back that giant elephant. And did you ever wonder how it happened that a giant elephant could be held in place by something that does not have the power to contain him? Well, here's how it works. You see, when, when he was first captured as a baby, uh, Jumbo was unable to, to, to pull free the, from the 12-inch stake and the, the small little rope that held him captive. Thus he grew up accepting the fact that he could never be able to, to remove the stake. He bought into the lie that he didn't have the strength to pull out of the stake or to break the rope that bound him. You know, the moral of the story is that the same is true for you and for me. We are allowing our lives to be controlled by habits that should no longer have the power to control us except the power that we in our, in our twisted little minds are choosing to give to them. Once a habit has broken your will to fight, you will feel a sense of hopelessness. Right there is where the habit itself owns you, and uh, because you have allowed it to own you. If I'm resonating with you this morning, it's because maybe your soul is in bondage. You feel like you've lost the will to fight because your will has been broken. That is the power of a bad habit. Okay, all right. Somebody says, what is a habit? Well, a habit is a tendency to repeat, repeat regularly the same actions or gesture or words in similar circumstances. The behavior repeated so, is repeated so often it becomes involuntary or fixed, and it's even compulsive now. There are good habits and there are bad habits. Good habits can guide us through the difficult times and situations in life. When we aren't sure what to do or, or when uh, we, are the, we, we may not see the dangers that is ahead of us. On the other hand, bad habits are often seemingly fine at the beginning, but they can lead us into some treacherous waters. You know, I, 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 uh, I read a, a little story about uh, it's, uh, you know, how bad habits tend to hold us uh, uh, or, or trick us or, or you, know, uh, you know, guide us into lethargy even. You know, it's like a, a, a smooth river in which a young boy is floating, seemingly harmless, which, when, which becomes swifter. For a little while at least, he feels excitement. But then comes the rapids. It feels somewhat kind of scary, but he keeps on going. 
and finally goes crashing over the waterfall, devastating and devastating and possibly even fatal. In other words, habits have a tendency to take our lives in direction that we, we would never have chosen. This morning, the message about habits is not just, it's not about you feeling like a weenie. It's not about coming down on yourself, folks. You see, all of us are dealing with something in life that is not convenient. Today, all of us need to break free from something. So I, 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 today I want us to look at some negative habits in our lives that, that we clearly need to break. They need to be broken, finally. First of all, habits will control you. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, it says, and it, it says, you say I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. And even though I'm allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. You know, uh, there is an ad for the lottery that says, know your limit and stay within it. <laughs> but you know what? When you look at the statistics of those that are hooked on gambling, it begs the question, how many people really know their limit and stay within it? Yes, we enjoy a certain amount of freedom and choice of, and commitment in the beginning. But as so often the case, our choices and commitments do not always bring freedom, but bondage. Often they take on a life of their own and they overpower us. And before we realize it, we're stuck in the pits of bad habits. Listen, right now, there's an awful lot of good people that are stuck in bad habits. So what is the habit that has mastery over you this morning? Are you hooked into a bad habit that you cannot seem to overcome? Is it alcohol? You know, the principle that Paul lived by was this. Though he was allowed to do anything, he would not become a slave to anything. This clearly applies to the dangers of alcohol addiction. So many people, at the beginning, they are mastery over it, but then it becomes mastery over them. You see, alcohol easily produces overpowering dependency and slavery. How about this one? How about swearing? Do you find yourself swearing when the other guy cuts you off on the road? Seem like you can't watch a movie or walk down the street these days without, without some kind of exposure to foul language. Swearing is a bad habit. Well, here's a doozy. Worry. Worry is a disease. It's a bad habit of the mind. Here are some ways you can know that worry is a problem for you. Uh, are you having difficulty sleeping? Are you losing your appetite? Are you experiencing headaches? Are you fearful of what others think about you? Are you do you get overwhelmed with fear of the future? Worry will kill you, folks. How about anger? Do you have a weakness or propensity to get angry easily? Does your attitude cause constant grief to those around you? Oh, <laughs> here's one that probably I have. Are you a compulsive eater? You know, compulsive eating is uncontrolled eating that is based on trying to satisfy an emotional anger. It's an emotional thing rather than a physical hunger. Maybe right now your bad habits are making it impossible to salvage your marriage. Is it gambling or drinking or financial stress brought about by your irresponsibility and recklessness? Do you have an uncaring or inconsiderate attitude that causes your spouse to lose self-worth 
and self-respect. Tell me something. Isn't it about time you break free? You know, habits is like a cable. We weave a thread of it every day and at last we simply cannot break it. Hear me well, friend. God wants to set you free this morning. And we're going to give you opportunity later on. But he wants to set you free from all this bondage. Secondly, habits are difficult to break, but not impossible. Not impossible. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 23 says, Can an Ethiopian change the color of his skin? Can a leopard take away its spots? Neither can you start doing good, for you have always done evil. Bad habits like, are like a comfortable beds. They're easy to get into, but they're hard to get out of. You know, and I just want to share an illustration with you, a story. It's about Franklin Graham. Franklin Graham was Billy, is Billy Graham's son. After he had committed his life to Christ, he was surprised to find his taste for cigarettes, you know, quite strong. It was as strong as ever. He determined to quit smoking, but three days later, he woke up with an absolutely overwhelming, almost terrifying desire for a cigarette. Here's what he said. He said, I wanted to smoke so badly, you know, that I couldn't think of anything else. It intensified with every passing minute throughout the day. The yearning for a cigarette grabbed me like the jaws of a junkyard dog. Finally, he shared his, his struggle with a, his friend Roy Gustafson. He was the longtime associate evangelist with Billy Graham. Roy, I quit smoking, but I, I don't think I can hold out. I just don't think I have the power to say no any longer. Oh, you don't, replied Roy. Why don't you just get down on your knees and tell God he's a liar? What? I, I can't do that. Then Roy quoted 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, and you need to get this. Some of you need to hear this. It's a promise you can claim for yourself. It says the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. So when you're tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Glory to God. You can endure. Then Roy said, you need to tell God he's a liar to his face because you claimed that verse and it didn't work. I'm not going to call God a liar, Franklin said. Because besides, I haven't claimed that verse yet. Oh, you haven't? said Roy, and then he sounded kind of shocked. He said, why don't you claim that verse? You know what? Franklin did claim the promise of that verse, and it did work. He was freed from nicotine. Listen, friend, whatever habit that's holding you in bondage this morning, you need to know that Jesus is the bondage breaker. He said in John chapter 14, verse 6, he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. And again, in John 8, verse 32, he says, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So what am I saying? I'm saying just like Franklin trusted in the, the Word of God and was set free from the hellish bondage, or bondage of nicotine, you can be set free by the Word of God. The Bible says that the Word of God is powerful and effective. So Jesus is the living Word. When he comes into your life and into your heart and into your bad habits, you don't need a syllabus. You don't need a 10-step program to break the shackles. You don't need a counseling appointment or a discussion group. Precious people, you only need the way, the truth, and the life to set you free. It was C.S. Lewis who once said that Jesus couldn't be a great teacher if he claimed to be the Son of God and he was not. It would make him a lunatic, like a man who says he's a boiled egg. Beyond that, he would be the devil himself. See, nowhere in the New Testament will you find any other model than that of a simple command given. With the choice of 
either of being either to reject it or walk and walk away or to believe it and be set free. How about you this morning? Do you believe in the Word of God? Do you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God this morning? Maybe all you simply need to say is a prayer. Lord, I choose this day to receive your grace and obey your command. And you will be set free. And watch it. <laughs> the Bible says, He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Finally, how do you break a bad habit? How do you? Well, Romans chapter 13, verse 14 says, Clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't let yourself think about ways, listen to this, to indulge your evil desires. In the physical life, we do best the things that, that have habitual, we have habitually learned to do. The same is true in the mental and spiritual life as well. We do not come in the world knowing how to do anything. No. <laughs> All we learn to do, we have acquired by habit. Remember, habit is purely mechanical. So let me give an application. Here are four principles of how to be set free. Number one, renew your, your mind with God's word daily. Renew your mind with God's words daily. Remember, sin begins in the mind. If you can stop the sin in your mind, you can stop it in your actions. Number two, make a break. Promptly make a break. You see, defeating habits also requires changes in lifestyle. If you're given a strong desire to break a habit and do not promptly carry it out, then the desire may soon fade away. For example, avoid the company of those who have the same problem and the places and circumstances which will tempt you. Number three, reinforce your life with, God, with godly friends. Get godly friends around you. You can't battle a bad habit alone. You should develop relationship with more mature Christians who will encourage you and hold you accountable. And finally, number four, get a new and a better habit. Focus on developing good habits. You see, we cannot destroy a bad habit by neglect. Let me say it again. You cannot destroy a bad habit by neglect. When a new and better habit enters your heart, it will drive out the whole stagnant habits. One writer puts it this way. He called it the expulsive power of a new affection. The expulsive power of a new affection. This doesn't mean that the battle be, will be without effort or without pain, but it is the most potent instrument for perfecting your character, sir. Listen, friend. What you cannot do in your own strength, you can do through the love and power of Jesus Christ. So this morning, if you're controlled by the power of a, of a habit, if you'll only come to Jesus Christ, He will set you free. He's now in heaven. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. You can reach out a hand of faith and feel the touch of His hand of healing in your life. He will give you deliverance when you call upon Him in faith. So this morning, our question is, is your soul in bondage to a habit? What habit is that? Some of it seem it's almost innoxious. Eh? Like you, 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 it doesn't, you see, it doesn't bother you. Only sometimes it bothers you. And, and then when it bothers you and you just passed away. This morning, we want to lead you to the cross where freedom is.